All right, so by now you know how we roll. We like to start the show with a few stories or a hot take on a story that you're not likely to see anywhere else. Now, I grew up in Virginia and ultimately decided that that was dumb. So I live in Maryland now, and I work here in D.C. Point being, I've been here for a while, so I can make all the jokes that I want at everyone's expense. We're going to start things off tonight in Dallas, Texas, where Washington Commander's owner Dan Snyder made an appearance on the field, was seen speaking with Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones, and according to Washington Post reporter Nikki Javalva, left the stadium in a large motorcade after the team's 25-10 loss. Very presidential exit, Dan. Now, he and Donald Trump have even more in common now that they're both currently star players in congressional investigations. Snyder showing up in more places than the team's defense did on Sunday. Man, now I do feel bad for anybody who got stuck in traffic behind this motorcade. Drivers are probably thinking, man, this has got to be the president or some high-ranking diplomat or even a high school football quarterback in Texas. Turns out, nope, it's just a really, really, really rich guy who's got more lawyers on his staff than defensive linemen. Priorities? All right, let's hope the team puts in as much effort on the field next week against Tennessee as Snyder did making appearances yesterday, which is easier said than done since Dan Snyder doesn't have to worry about trying to tackle Derrick Henry next week. If we could only see that the other way around. All right, we're headed to Fairfax, Virginia for this next story, where two suspects who police believe are responsible for a string of ATM robberies. Yeah, they got caught on video struggling mightily to steal one of those machines from an Exxon gas station. So the question is, how have they been getting away with this? It really looks like they suck at crime. We're going to we're going to go to the Telestrator right now and break this down. So let's run through a play by play here of some of these criminal shenanigans. You're going to like this because it actually takes a while for it to happen. All right, step one. Boom. You saw that hole in the door. The foot came through. They are off to a hardcore start, breaking the glass. Now they are in for the long haul to the ATM Batman, which is in the back of the store. And what are they doing? They're shaking it around like a baby they're trying to put to sleep. rock a cash machine. Then you saw the dude fly out of frame like a parkour person. Now he's trying to put the thing, see this dolly right here? They are trying to put the ATM on the dolly, right? Should be a simple move. We've all done U-Haul. We've all moved our own stuff before. But these guys, they just are not going to be able to get it, right? So let's put the thing on the dolly. And no, and the dolly comes crashing to the floor. This whole clip needs the Benny Hill music. How many fools in hoodies does it take to steal an ATM machine? These two Got it done. They probably could have used some backup. All right, now it was trying to be out the door. It falls off the dolly again. This is basically the opening scene of the movie Barber Shop after much struggle and effort. Look. Did, did they finally get it out the door? But literally, the most fun I'll ever watch seeing people commit a felony. So after watching this clip, I have no doubt that Fairfax police will find these two. I mean, they really struggled just to commit this crime. It took them 20 minutes. How nobody responded in that time is beyond me. And they can't be doing a good job of covering their tracks. It doesn't seem like strategic planning is one of their strengths. All right, chose this next story because it is the latest plot twist from the seemingly never-ending legal saga of the January 6th Capitol riot defendants. A group of 34 detainees in D.C.'s jail, so-called Patriot Wing, they have written a letter requesting to be transferred to Guantanamo Bay's military prison because they think the amenities would be better there. They're worried about amenities in jail. Does that even need a punchline? Pretty darn laughable already, right? And they're not even in the roughest part of the D.C. jail. Yet, they want to go to the prison most people think of when they hear the words human rights abuses. But go ahead, go ahead. Trade in those stale bologna sandwiches for some waterboarding if you want to. They better hope that nobody actually gives them what they want. There is irony here, and it is quite rich in that they would be joining a prison full of people who also plotted against the U.S. government. And doesn't terrorism make for strange bedfellows? All right, we're going to head to north to Alaska for this next story, where viewers can live stream the brown bears of Cat Bay National Park and Preserve eating voraciously to prepare for hibernation. And then you can vote for the fattest one during what the park has dubbed Fat Bear Week. How 
awesome is this? They make fishing look easy. I'm out on a boat, on a dock with my kids all day long, getting yelled at. Maybe I get a nibble or two. These bears out there catching salmon, they're not even moving a muscle, just opening their mouth. Now, when I heard the term fat bear week, I got to be honest. I figured it was some sort of cosplay Tinder promotional thing for people who wanted to rub fuzzies. So I was relieved to hear that we have not sunk that low yet as a society. But you, you know, you with the Winnie the Pooh costume in your closet, don't get any ideas, sicko. Nah, no. People can vote on their choice of bears in brackets, March Madness style. Why wait for college basketball season when you can enter this tournament right now? You probably know as much about these bears as you do to the teams you'll be picking in March, so go ahead and get an early start on making arbitrary picks. Now, I do feel bad for whoever has to tell the bears which one is the winner of the fat bear contest. You know dude is coming back minus a leg. My favorite story today, yes, it's definitely fat bear week. It's the only one that doesn't involve crime or Sunday's beating that the Washington commanders probably wish that they could have pressed charges for.